Oh, goodness. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. We made it. Barely. We're live. We're here. <laughs> Yay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. A little late, but we're here. Hi. Hello, everyone. Oops, that's the wrong direction. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We still have our decorations up. Mm -hmm. And our t-shirts back on. Yeah, and our t-shirts are back on. Even though you can't see them as much today. We have cake. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Let's we show them the cake, Aminder. Yay. It's sympathy. Hi, Ray. It's like sympathy cake. And it smells like cotton candy. And I'm ready to eat it. <laughs> we'll do that towards the end of the, of the feed. We actually have a fully fledged situation yeah. today. We really do. We have a fully fledged situation today. It's actually going to be way less frantic than yesterday. No, we were just frantic in the past 10 minutes. We were, yeah. But you know what? It's 10 minutes of frantic as opposed mm. to like two hours of frantic like yes. we were yesterday. Um, the AI or the AI story. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. From Walmart. Yep. Walmart. Last minute cake. Um, so, yeah. Um, the story, Jeremy story is done. Uh, it ends as they all do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cliffhanger uh, to be continued. Quite, quite literally. Quite literally a uh, yeah, quite literally a cliffhanger. So uh we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're excited to actually show you all. The plan is to show you all what the Patreon actually looks like. Um, minus Ray and Micah's tier, because I did not get to that last night. I was so fucking tired. And I had to like, like wake her up this morning, and usually she's up before I am. Yeah, she had to wake me up this morning at like nine o'clock. She's like, ma'am. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. We have things to do. And I was like, <laughs> so yeah. So we have to do this today. We have everything ready to go. I have our T public store up and ready to show you. All designs are up and running. Some of them are actually on sale. Um, we're still working and deciding on a like brand logo, generic T. Mm -hmm. We I just don't want it to be so like here's a logo on a shirt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're trying to, I want to brainstorm that a little more. Yes, I slept. Okay. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. Um, I slept hard, mm -hmm. like knocked the fuck out. <laughs> so I needed it apparently, but um, let's, let's get started. Yeah. You ready to get started? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're going to do like we always do. We're going to hit you with the fun. We're going to slide in with the juicy middle content. And then we're going to, End it with the fuckery with a Jeremy. Is everybody ready for the show? I think we're ready. Um, I need pen, please. I'm gonna move that mouse out the way. Shank you, lady. We are on today, still in our adult Mad Lib. Gonna get going, y'all. Let me find the hello. Excuse. Okay. Cool beans. All right. Amanda. This one's called New Baby in the House. Which some of the words I thought up um, was before I realized the topic <laughs> of it. So don't judge me. It's going to be interesting. So, Amanda, I need an adjective from you, please. Crusty. Crusty. Uh, plural noun, please. Dying trees. Oh. Dying trees. It's very sad. Uh, noun, please. Mexican restaurant. Mexican <laughs> restaurant. Okay. Verb. Break. B R E A K. E A K. All right. Another verb. Power walk. Power walk. And sorry, our banner keeps cutting my face off. I don't know how to turn it off now that it's on. So, okay. uh, part of the birdie, uh, index finger, index finger. And for people who don't say that's stupid, that's part of the body. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, Micah says, Mom says hi and that she is happy you are doing better. Nikki, she is currently watching the park mystery. Oh, thank you. Thank that's you, so Mom. Sweet. Tell her, thank you, Mom. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, noun, ma'am. Uh, sex hotline. <laughs> okay, uh, plural noun, please. Automobiles. 
automobile. And part of the body plural, please. Kneecaps. Kneecaps, of which you have shifty ones. Yes, I do. <laughs> Noun. Uh, dollar General. Dollar Gentral. That is a uh, dollar store around here, in yeah. case that's not a national thing. Um, it's it usually just, they, they usually just pop up randomly or international in, like, thing, sorry. In, in in rural areas. So yes. if you have a country town with mainly fields and like one stoplight, you're gonna have a dollar. You're general. gonna have a dollar general. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, plural noun. Mucusy poops. Ew. You made it up. That's gross, man. <laughs> Verb post haste. Past tense, please. <laughs> Inflated. Inflated. Okay. Um, part of the body, please. Neck beard. Neck be beard. Can be. Verb. Uh, think. Nice and simple. Uh, adjective. Scaly. Scaly. That's not how you spell it, but it's fine. This is, she's now watching this one, so she heard, oh no. Aww. Oh, that's like, oh no, like, she Good. Me say sex Sorry, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Plural noun. Dilapidated cemeteries. I can't spell it either. If you couldn't tell, we definitely thought of these words as we were driving down the road <laughs> to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> we were driving to Walmart to pick up the cake, and we're like, I gotta think of words, and we're just like, speed, you know, like this. That's a <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Another noun. Speed limit sign. Speed limit. That's two T's sign. That, I can't spell. Okay, another plural now. Radio towers. Radio towers. And a verb, ending in I-N-G. Fucking <laughs> Oh, not for babies! Like I said, I thought of some of these words before <laughs> I saw the title of the Madeline. Oh, yes, yes, three viewers being me, Ray, and my mom. That's actually kind of nice. It yeah. is. I like it. And we it. appreciate you yes, guys. Yes, and we appreciate you guys. You're the best. Always the best. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah. Okay. New baby and house. Ready? Congratulations! You and your sweetie have welcomed a crusty born baby into your family. <laughs> Ew. Now that I mean, you're kind of crusty. They shouldn't they? be crusty when they come out, just in case anybody doesn't know that. They're not supposed to be crusty. They should be nice and moist. But then it becomes crusty, you won't clean them off. Yeah, they can get dry and crusty if you're not moisturizing them, but they ought not to be crusty when they come out. Anyway, now that you're home from the hospital with your bundle of dying trees. <laughs> Now that you're home from the hospital with your bundle of dying trees, here are some tips on surviving new Mexican restaurant hood. <laughs> so bad. Okay. First, tiny humans mainly do three things all day long. Eat, sleep, and break like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> if they break, they won't have another tomorrow. Right. Y'all ought to not break them. A babies have very few bones. So yes. If, if, you, if they break if, the limb, you tried to try. Yeah, you had to try. They bounce quite easily. So if you broke one, that's a, that's a yeah, big deal. Yeah, babies are humans bouncing bones. Yeah, like they're so. pretty squishy. Okay. Be prepared to have a power walk up. Oh, be prepared to have power walk up stains <laughs> on most of your clothes. If your wife is index finger feeling... Feeding. Feeding! Oh, I, I covered up that letter. If your wife is index finger feeding, your yeah. baby's gonna die. No. Um, make sure she has a comfortable chair to sit in and a glass of sex hotline should she get thirsty. Oh, no! Why didn't they ask for a drink? I... Oh, no. Okay. Um, I've lost my place now. Okay. And gentle automobile hands off her kneecaps while the baby's eating. For many new moms, the idea of a steamy roll in the dollar gentle <laughs> is the last thing on her mind. You are getting into petty mucusy poop with each other because you haven't inflated in days. Ew. I don't love any of the things that that just said. I don't love it. 
that's really nasty but you will get into some pretty nasty poops as mm -hmm. new parents that's that's real life a good rule of neckbeard is to think when your scaly angel sleeps Ew. <laughs> first they were crusty now they're scaly he's all this baby's baby part lizard who's progressing in the wrong direction get some fucking lotion please You'll still be a pair of walking, dilapidated cemeteries, <laughs> less prone to snapping at each other at the drop of a speed limit sign. <laughs> Knee deep in changing dirty radio towers, babies are fucking machines, so it's only fair and take turns. Now they're saying they're machines that fuck, <gasps> or they're like, they're Ow. machines. They gave me a headache. Oh, my water boy's mom. Ow! <laughs> oh, please get that baby some fucking lotion. Please. Please get that child some lotion, okay? No scaly or dry, crusty baby. Dry baby is a sad baby. Yeah, dry baby is a sad baby. Take it from a mom. Please don't. Please don't let your baby get dry or, or scaly or crusty. That's gross. That's nasty. Okay? Anyway, anyway, now that uh, that's out of the way. The buttons out of the way. I propose we have a little shitty shitty chat chat. Mm -hmm. We think yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no, we've we've already devolved. devolved. It's this only it's bad. Only, it's only one thirty in the afternoon. We done fuckered this one up good, didn't we? Okay, so we decided in the car. I think that we're gonna do medical gaslighting today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Only because it is obviously an experience I just had, and I feel quite, um, quite chuffed and ready to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You ready to talk about it? Yes. Since you experienced it along with me today. Yep. You got to roll my eyes you and got everything. Got to roll your eyes and everything. Okay. So, um, just a trigger warning: we are going to be talking about medical gaslighting today. If you have issues with um, being dismissed or any like medical trauma in any way weight, weight um weight issues um eating disorders anything of that sort of realm i just want to present an option now for you to maybe either prepare yourself or maybe go ahead and tune out if you don't want to listen to this whether you're catching it live or you are on the replay just want to let everybody know that we are going to be discussing these topics today and there are going to be some pretty insensitive things repeated that were said. Um, so just wanted to give everybody that, you know, ahead of time. Just a little warning. Just a little warning. So let's begin, shall we? Yes. So what brought me to wanting to discuss this today is my experience with one doctor in particular, but also sort of as a whole in the hospital over the last three days. So when I first arrived in the hospital, I already showed up with an MRI um, that had um, shown intracranial pressure. So that's where there's a an excess amount of your cerebral spinal fluid building up in your brain and your spinal cord. So the first thing I was met with when I walked back to the ER to talk to the doctor, I told him like, hey, I have this MRI. I have this stuff, you know, on this MRI. These are my symptoms I'm having, yada, yada, yada. Among a couple of other things, he did say, you know, usually with this kind of stuff, like weight loss helps it and this stuff helps it. But since you're here. Mm -hmm. Let's do these tests, right? He wanted to keep me for observation. So that was number one that I was told weight loss, mm -hmm. right? First time I got fat. weight loss. You're too fat. Second doctor comes in while I'm in the ER, which is just the regular hospitalist at this point to talk to me. He also brings up, asks me, well, have you gained a lot of weight recently? Because we usually see this in people you know, who have either gained a lot of weight recently or, you know, are chronic, are overweight or whatever. I'm like, okay, so this is the second time someone has brought up my weight to me. Wonderful. We love that. So then I get, you know, through all of that, I get admitted. Then I'm on the day, the second day in the hospital when I'm supposed to be waiting to get my spinal tap 
and all that good jazz. I have another doctor come in. He's my neurologist. He's the neurologist that's the attending. As soon as he walked in, I didn't really love his demeanor. Mm -hmm. Seemed pretty flippant. Mm -hmm. Um, He seems like the kind of guy that maybe likes to keep his appointments like cheery and like jokey, like jokey, which is like fine in a lot of circumstances for me. I don't really I'm like don't have a I'm not opposed to that because like you were like the nurses were joking, we were joking. Yeah, right like back. it's that's not it. It's not the issue that he was being jokey, but like he comes in and he starts asking me, so like what brought you in and da da da. So I try starting to explain to him. And I'm like, well, did you look at my MRI? And he was like. Nah, you know, I just came in here to talk to you first. And I was like, well, it showed a week ago that I have intracranial pressure started having, well, did you have this? Well, did you do this? So I'm speaking to him. I'm trying to answer his question. He's fucking cutting me off when I'm talking. Okay. So then he finally gets to the point and he goes, well, you know, we don't generally see this in people over or under 150 pounds. So, you know, I think in, you know, in general, weight loss would probably help you a bit. If you could lose about 40 pounds, that'd be helpful. And, you know, but, you know, we, we got you here. We'll make sure we check everything. We're going to do this test and da, 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 da. And I, I was like, okay, what is that? Number four, number four mm-hmm. that was brought up? Mm-hmm. Three or four at this point? Yeah. So he leaves the room. And I turn to Amanda and I say, was it just me <laughs> or was he kind of an asshole? Like, and my husband's on speakerphone during this time. My husband had called. He's on speakerphone and he's listening to this. And I was like, okay, so I don't fucking like him mm-hmm. at all. Not my, not my friend, not my cup of tea. Didn't seem like he gave a fuck what I was saying. Didn't listen to me when he'd asked me a question. He wouldn't let me fucking talk. And then he basically told me, I should just hurry up and lose 40 pounds and my problems will be solved. And then like the whole time I was rolling my eyes because he was just saying, oh, all these are probably because of this, all because of your weight. I'm like, well, that I'm thinking like that can't really be true because he's like, we don't see this over people, like people over 150 pounds. I'm like, okay, you're not telling me there's not a single person under 150 pounds. Right. It's like saying only fat people get diabetes. Right. Diabetes. Diabetes. I can't, I can't say it. Otherwise. I can't say it otherwise either. So. Yeah. So basically that was his consensus. So that pissed me off and I was really irritated. Then another doctor comes in. It's a neurologist as well. And she's a woman and she asked me some more questions. She listened to me when I talked to her. And then she said she leads with at least, I know this is a very sensitive question. But have you lost or have you gained some extra weight research? Have you gained a lot of weight recently or something? Like in a short amount of time. In a short amount of time. And I said, well, yeah, I have. Like I went from working full time on my feet all day long to sitting, doing nothing at home for six and a half, seven weeks. I've yes, I've put on some weight recently, but, but like uh, not enough to like for that. Yeah, like maybe fifteen to twenty pounds, like like basically too much to what to feasibly gain that. Like right, basically it's too much weight in a small amount of time, even just going from active to not active. Right. So like me not and yes, I'm sure I'm eating way more now that I'm home, and I'm sure I've actually gained some of it. But some of this has to be like fluid retention and shit like that because I'm gaining weight so rapidly that like. Something else is going on. Sorry, so I hit the I hit the desk. Um, so I don't really think that's the only reason for this issue, right? And she goes, "Oh yeah, you know I understand. Like you're too young. We're not going to mess around. We're going to get to the bottom of this." Da da da. By that point, though, I was just fucking defeated. I was just done. Like I understand that I'm not a small person. Get it? I understand. That I'm all of five foot three on a good day, hair not included, right? And that I am uh, 230, almost 230 pounds now. Okay. I get it. On a five foot three frame, that looks large. It just does. The 230 pounds does not equal someone being obese because there are plenty of people who are 230 pounds who are built of like a brick shit house of solid fucking muscle. 
So the pounds have nothing to do with it for me. It's the fact that there's 230 pounds on a five foot frame. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm fluffy. Okay, I am. Enrique Iglesias, or whatever that name is. I'm Gabriel Iglesias. Gabriel Iglesias. I'm fluffy, right? I have struggled with my weight my entire fucking life, okay? My whole life. Since I hit fucking puberty, well, even before puberty, I was a chubby kid. Like, after age six, I was a larger kid. Like, it just is what it is. I don't want to constantly hear someone remind me of what I already know I am, mm-hmm. right? Right? I've been on every diet you can possibly think of. I've tried to do every workout routine you can possibly think of. And even when I was at my actual, like, healthiest, I still... Do we have questions? It says, the way it, the way you said it's so important, They like, they could have at least be respectful in their questions. Yes. Th- yes. It's so, like the second doctor was the first Yeah, doctor the woman was- doctor was very, very respectful in how she said it. She was trying to be cautious about how she said it. Right? I understand that, like, yes... Weight loss can help with the buildup of cerebral spinal fluid. I I understand that. But also, you don't just lose 40 pounds. Like, it doesn't just go... What would you like me to do, sir? Cut off a boob. Would you like me to, like, call plastic surgery up here and tell them just chop off everything and suck it all out? Like, I'm not going to lose 40 pounds tomorrow, so could you talk to me about another option, please? Because losing 40 pounds rapidly is not going to fucking happen for me. It's not going to happen for me. I'm not going to lose 40 pounds fast enough to fix the fucking problem. Mm -hmm. In the time frame, it needs to be fixed, which is like yesterday. And it's also, and I pointed those out to Nikki last night, it's also the fact that he kept bringing up like, well, we don't see this sort of stuff in in lighter people. Right. And so he's probably the type of thing that like, he might be the type of doctor that thinks like fat people are all just unhealthy. Right. And so I pointed out, it's like, I was almost 300 pounds at my heaviest. I never had blood pressure issues. I never had cholesterol issues, never had diabetes or pre-diabetes, nothing. Like I, my blood pressure, even I, I distinctly remember going to the hospital, um, before surgery, uh, like basically it was like kind of like a consultation evaluation. They took my, they put, took my blood pressure. I think they were genuinely surprised that me, almost 200 pounds, and my blood pressure was, like, 110 over 70. Right. Even, like, even in, like, a hospital setting, like, people right. seem to be higher. But it's, so the fact is, like, I've never had those issues, and so it's, like, you can't just automatically assume that both sides, that someone being thin is automatically healthy, and that someone being fat is automatically unhealthy. Right. So. So, it's, like, my weight has zero to do I don't want to say it has zero to do with it. Like, obviously I have conditions that if I were smaller, it would be easier to manage. Get it. I get it. Okay. But the reality of the matter is I'm not. So now what? Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'm not. So now what? Nor is that a solution that's going to be achieved quickly. What we say in here. It says, yeah, it's not the solution for right now. It would be great to have a conversation after a a current fix is done, so it's not searching. So it's like, right. yeah, it's like treat it right now. Like treat, like do what we can right now. Like I will, you know, I'll put in the work. I'll yeah, I'll lose the weight, but I I can't do that right now. What can you do for me right now? Right. Yeah. Like I don't need you to keep drilling home to me that if you weighed 150 pounds or under, you wouldn't have this problem. That's essentially what he was saying to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's your fault because you're fat. Was essentially what we were getting at in that conversation. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't be here if you were fat. Right. Thanks. That doesn't help me right now. It's almost like, uh, it's almost felt like it's like a punishment. Like, yeah. well, this happened because you're fat. So, like, sorry, but you have to you have to deal with it. And it's like, well, fuck you, brother. Like, I don't, no, I don't. Like, I don't have to deal with it. I'm in a fucking hospital. Fix it. I understand that me staying this heavy is not an option. I have to be very serious about what I'm eating, how much I'm eating, and do everything within my own personal power to control those things so that I at least know I'm doing what I can to lose the weight. If the weight won't come off, then there's other issues we can talk to and I'll have to get medical intervention. And I will take that seriously. I will. However, what about right now? While I'm still fluffy. Like, what can you do with me now? Right. 
So, I mean, I was taken care of. They did drain my spinal fluid. So like, I get it. And then they did what they had to do. They put me on different medication. They upped my blood pressure medication to help get that under control because that does help with me with fluid retention because a lot of what I struggle with is fluid retention. So, and, and water is heavy. Water weight is heavy. It is like, if you are holding water I weight, like, I think a liter of water is 2.2 pounds. Right. So like if I'm retaining water and I'm not reabsorbing fluids properly for my spinal cord and like I have all this excess water in my body that's going to cause puffiness weight gain I'm going to gain weight faster that's not the entire problem I get it like I like sweet stuff I like to eat goat's cheese in large quantities that's very <laughs> very calorie and fat heavy like I get it I have a problem that I can fix but not quickly it's kind of like if someone, like, say an overweight person went to the hospital because they had a heart attack and telling them, well, this wouldn't have had, like, instead of, like, going in and doing, like, the heart surgery, well, it's, like, just going, well, this wouldn't have happened if you lost weight. Yeah, if you were smaller, you know, but. Because sm cause small people don't have heart attacks. Right. Well, then that got me thinking, like, how many fucking people are dismissed in a fucking doctor's office simply because they don't. Uh, outwardly appear to be healthy because we have been so conditioned as a fucking society to equate someone's size and the number on a scale with their level of health. Yeah, I can see it happening too. Yeah. Like, and it's also like, um, the, I mean, there's like, a, I see a lot of things on the internet, like TikTok and reels and all that talking about like women. And it's like, so I, she's like, I went to the, I went to the doctor for, you know, because my knee, and they're like, well, if you just lost weight, you wouldn't have this knee pain. Right. It's like, well, maybe because of the fact that I fell down a flight of stairs. Right. Did you think about that? Right. Maybe I fell. Well, maybe you wouldn't have fallen if you weren't so fucking fat mm -hmm. and could see where you were stepping, Amanda. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Like, but everything comes back to the number on the fucking scale. And nothing is more like, like glaring to me about. Sorry, I just totally like nodded a bubble at you for some reason. <laughs> Um, gross. Fuck it. We're live. Um, nothing is like brought to my attention more when it comes to like the number on the scale versus like general health. When my, when I hear my husband talk about being, having to be like so, certain people having to be taped, um, in the military because they get on the scale and their BMI is wrong. And uh, let's, let's put it this way. Like Dwayne Johnson, the rock, he would be considered obese according to a BMI scale. Yeah. According to a BMI scale. You are morbidly obese if you have muscles. If you have muscles, like think of linebackers and like football and stuff. Right. So some like of these athletes, guys, athletes, like right, top notch athletes with five percent body fat, right, could be considered obese because their muscles, you know, how much their muscles weigh, how right. much how they're built. So the BMI scale is dumb. There are guys in my husband's unit who are jacked, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, jacked, and they have to be taped every single time because. What does tape to mean? What like a measuring tape, like oh, a, okay. like a, you know what I mean? Like a, yeah, a tape, a tape, like, measure. A, like sewing tape. Yeah, like sewing tape. Like, so they mean, like, tape, tape like for measurement. Tape, like for no athletic tape. No, no, no. They have to be uh, measured around their waist because if they, and like other circumference things, because their BMI is so far off. And they are the healthiest motherfuckers there. Mm -hmm. Also, the fucking guy from The Biggest Loser. Mm hmm. Had a Widowmaker fucking heart attack in the gym and would have died had he not had one in front of people. And he was the, he was a fit fucker. He was working out every day. He was eating well, all the things and had a fucking Widowmaker heart attack. So why did he die? Or why did he almost die? Why did he have a, a Widowmaker? Shouldn't that have been because he was fat though? Because that's what most of these doctors will tell you. Mm-hmm. So why is it that, like you, who has, like, hardly ever had a health issue like that in your whole life, who has been on both ends of the spectrum for weight and been completely fine when you were heavier, why is that a thing? And then why is also a fit fucker dropping almost dead of a Widowmaker heart attack a thing if it's all because of your weight? Yeah, it's like, it's almost like as if our organs and the insides... Don't also, have anything to do also, with that. My also factor into your health. Correct. So like I like I had a I had a kidney stone. I think I was like 23 or something. I had a kidney stone. I drink all the water in the world. Yeah. Like I drink all the water in the world and and you know, being 23, and that was when I was probably, I mean, about 10 pounds less than I am now, but so I was about like 160, I'd say. And so it's like 
the fact that I at like 160 at like 20 years old got a kidney stone, but yet someone like my mom who drinks, you know, three to four sodas a day, Coke sodas a day has yeah. never had one, never had one. So it's like, just, yeah. that's how shit works. Sometimes. Carolyn is, is a, a fan mm -hmm. of her Coke has yep. always been a fan of Coke. The it, soda, the, the soda. Way. Yeah. The not, not the drugs, the yeah. soda, yeah. Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and has never had a fucking kidney stone. Yeah. So I am just pissed off that it is made this much of a big fucking deal how heavy you are and what your outward appearance is and all this shit is because of your weight. I've been medically gaslit for many things my entire life. I have gotten this far. And then when that doctor came back again, after I had my spinal tap, he said it again to me, by the way. We'll just put that there. He said the 150 pound thing again to me. Oh, because so the first time you're talking about yes. was when I wasn't there. Yes. Okay. When, yes. And then said it again when he came back after my spinal yeah, that, tap so that before that he discharged me yeah, yesterday so that, so that was that was when i started rolling my eyes like i literally was just, i was sitting behind nikki um and i just was like <sighs> yeah so that same doctor said it to me twice so yeah um but anyway i as far as like other things that i've been medically gaslit for like how long has it taken me to figure out what the fuck's wrong with me and i've had weird shit happening and high blood pressure and all this other shit since I had my second child. Mm -hmm. When I had high blood pressure issues after having Noah nine years ago, I walked into a cardiologist's office because nothing they were doing at the primary care was keeping my blood pressure in check. I was probably, no, I was less heavy then than I was now. I was maybe one night, so maybe four, 30 pounds lighter at that time couldn't keep my blood pressure under control and i walked into a cardiologist's office who was a fucking woman i just want to say that as close to this microphone as i can she was a woman a woman cardiologist okay so everybody hears that clearly got it a woman looked at me in my fucking eyeballs with blood pressure that was excessive and because I looked fat, says to me, well, you're a stay-at-home mom. You probably should just exercise more and lose a little weight and then come back and talk to me. <laughs> Dead fucking serious. You're a stay-at-home mom. You need to get some more activity in your life and lose a few pounds. And then once you've lost a few pounds, if your blood pressure is still not under control, then we'll talk. Literally what she said to me. First of all, fuck you. And the horse she rode in on sideways. You're a fucking woman who, by the way, was heavier than me. I love it. Staring at me and telling me it's I like, need to go to the fucking gym. It's like doctors who smoke. Yeah. You're staring at me as a medical fucking professional. Heavier than I am. Telling me I need to go lose some weight and then come back and talk to her. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. It's kind of like when... So I had, I had stomach surgery and that helped me lose the weight. So I went to the ER. It was like probably within two weeks of me having the surgery. I was for two weeks constantly throwing up, could not keep anything down, even water. Everything that went down came right back up. And so eventually my mom had taken me to the ER and I was like 21 at the time, 22. Um, and she had taken me to the ER and the doctor, male doctor came in and was telling, knew like I had the surgery. He goes, well, I mean, just so you know, you can't really just eat whatever you want after the surgery. I go, I know. He goes, what have you eaten today? I said, well, Nothing. I was like, I went to school and on my way home from school, I rushed home and threw up the water and the probably three bites of applesauce that I ate. And he goes, well, that's not very fun. And like walked away. And so um, basically they found out that my stomach had literally twisted in on itself to where the, there was no opening to the stomach. So everything I was eating and drinking came right back up. And so I had lost 25 pounds in two weeks. Yeah. 25 pounds in two weeks. And like just certain bodily fluids were the color of tea that should be light yellow. Yeah. And so it's just, it was a lot. So like to be dismissed like that. And they had to go, I had to go back to like the doctor, to like the hospital twice before they realized, oh, this is what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Your stomach is not, is not formed correctly. Right. So, so I get it. Yeah, so that is um, that is our life sometimes, and 
it's really fucking frustrating. Because, like, how many people end up dying or becoming severely disabled or incredibly sick for years and lose so much years, so many years off their life and so much quality of life simply because they walk into a fucking doctor's office and are have the audacity to be heavy. Yeah. Have the audacity to be not the proper standard of beauty when they get there. It's disgusting to me. It's fucking disgusting. I don't know how we fix it. I don't know what is done about it, but it's disgusting. And I think it needs to be talked about more. And I think these doctors more than anything, especially now, need to have trauma-informed training built into their fucking schooling. And they also need to have, no matter what kind of fucking doctor you are, eating disorder training built into their fucking schooling. And it needs to be something they have to re-up on maybe twice a year or once a year or once every two years. They need to be retrained again. Because let me paint a fucking Birmingham for you. Okay? What if I was someone who used to have an eating disorder, was maybe anorexic or bulimic or one of those? Okay? And name one, pick one. Maybe I used to be so unhealthily underweight. Mm-hmm. And then I finally, through therapy and treatment and learning about my body and learning about myself and all these things, was finally able to accept the way I was as a person was eating healthily. And because of my eating disorder and the years I've spent starving myself, my body now lives and stays in survival mode and will only know how to store fat instead of let go of it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm heavy. And maybe, we'll just say maybe, that's me. And maybe the fact that intracranial pressure that I've had for God knows how long, which he did say to me the second time coming around, ate his own words a little bit. I do feel like you've had this for a really long time. Yeah, buddy. Thanks. Doesn't make up for what you said. Maybe this intracranial pressure caused my pituitary gland to flatten the fuck out and fucked my hormones all to hell. So I've been gaining weight rapidly for months. Basically at no work. Even while I was still working. Even when I was working the most. 73 hours in a fucking week. 16 plus hour days. I was gaining weight then. And him coming in and telling me those things traumatized me to the place where it reactivated my fucking eating disorder. Like After years of working and therapy and trauma and unwinding all of that shit and self-acceptance, it re-triggered my fucking eating disorder. What if that fucking happened? And then the next time maybe a doctor sees me, it's because I'm yet again starved, malnourished, and on the brink of death this time because my organs are shutting down because I starved myself because a doctor told me the only way for me to get better is to lose weight. And the only way I know how to lose weight quickly is to stop eating Mm -hmm. or eat and throw it up. What if that fucking doctor led to someone's death? Because, or I went home and had a mental breakdown and God forbid committed, unalived myself because we can't say the S word. What if I unalived myself because of that? Because I knew I was never going to be able to do that. And that doctor had grilled it in my head so many times that that's the only way I get better. And I tried my whole life to be better and I know I can't be better. And I unalived myself because of that. Because that would have been better than going through everything I already went through again. I'm sorry if you ever had to go through that. Yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting. And it sucks. It sucks. 
and I know that this is heavy shit to talk about, and I am sorry that you had to go through that because that's it's it's like no awful. I don't wish that on anyone. I, I don't wish that shit on anyone. Like what a lot of people don't know about me, but Amanda knows, is that I have struggled. I wouldn't say it was a full blown eating disorder, but definitely disordered eating my entire life. I do go through restriction and binging. Mostly binging, but when I was in high school. She's eating like 500 calories a day. I was eating 500 calories a day because I wanted to fit in a particular prom dress. I had a goal that I wanted to be, I had a weight goal that I wanted. And I had a prom dress that was too small for me. And I wasn't far enough away. So I spent, what, maybe two months, Mm -hmm. three months, working out twice a day. Also attending PE class. But also working out. So I'd work out in the morning before I went to school. I would go to school. Do PE class. Then I would go from school to Johnny Logan College and work out at the gym there. And then would only eat about 500 calories a day. My food consisted of 100 calorie packs and yogurt cups. That's what I ate Mm -hmm. for two to three months. And I lost weight. I got down to 148 pounds, the smallest I've ever been in my entire adult life. It worked. But I was unfucking healthy. And I looked it. I looked sickly. My head looked like a fucking bobblehead on this tiny, emaciated fucking body at five, at four foot three. I won't do it again. I won't. It's not worth it to me. Mm-hmm. Do I need to be healthy? Absolutely. Will I take what he said seriously and honestly put conscious effort into what I'm putting in my body and pay more attention to it? Yes, I will. Because I can make changes and I can make better choices. I understand that. But I will fucking not. Like ruin your mental health doing it. No, ruin my mental health doing it. Or ruin my physical health further in other ways doing it. I will not. I won't do it. It's like you can't sacrifice one to help the other. Right. So until then, I'm going to bust down every doctor's office door I have to. To get the proper medical intervention in the meantime. While I'm also doing the things that could help ancillary. In an ancillary way. Because you're not going to fucking dismiss me anymore. I've been sick for almost, well, since I had my first kid, I've had issues. But since, for sure, since having Noah, since having my second child, I've been sick for nine fucking years in one way or another. I've had weird ass allergies. I've had fluid retention. I've had blood pressure problems, migraine headaches, all these things. And everyone fucking dismissed it as hormonal, uh, depression, uh, which I did have. But like every symptom was because I was depressed, anxiety, um, lose more weight, uh, you fucking name it, right? Oh, your hormones are fine. Oh, all your labs are fine. Everything's normal. Everything's normal. But nothing was fucking normal about me. And I refuse after all the fucking work I have done in therapy and everything I have gone through. Now that I specifically now that I know things are wrong for a doctor to stare at me and tell me you're sick because you're fat. You didn't even read my fucking chart before you came in here to talk to me. You have no idea what's going on. He didn't know I had intracranial pressure. He didn't know I had an MRI that showed a flat pituitary gland. He didn't know that I had all down my spinal column, pockets of my covering around my spinal column, pushing out my fucking spine. He didn't know anything about me. Didn't didn't know shit. But here he was telling me how I could fix myself. Fuck you. Go read my chart and then come back and talk to me. Mm-hmm. That's go, what I'm going to tell you. Go study, sir. Go study your fucking facts. Because until then, I don't want to fucking talk to you. Mm-hmm. So I really hope I never have to deal with him again. My actual neurologist that I will see on the 20th better come more correct than that, or he's going to get a fucking earful from me because I'm already done dealing with this bullshit. I'm very blessed to have a primary care doctor who does not treat me this way. She is the reason why I've gotten to go down all these avenues and figure out all these health things that are going on with me because she's taken me seriously and she's listened when I speak to her. So I am more grateful for her than she ever could know. And she even like checked on you after she. Yes, she gave me her personal cell phone number so that she could check on me after she sent me to the ER because she wanted to make sure that everything was going well and that I was being treated well. So. Yeah, like, that's a fucking doctor. If you don't have basic fucking compassion for people, you should not be in the fucking medical field. You shouldn't. Right. 
You should not be in a medical right. in the medical field where you have to have bedside manner with people. You should not fucking be in the medical field if you cannot have basic compassion for human life. It's very ego driven. It's like, yeah, it's part of it. It's like you want to help people, but it's also like you kind of have to be a human as well. There's a human side. Oh, yeah, that you're overweight and react with depression explanation on every health issue. Right, exactly. Exactly. Everything is always, oh, it's just depression or you're just hormonal or you're just a woman of childbearing age. Welcome to being this. When I was having my uterine prolapse st issues going on, the nurse practitioner told me, welcome to being a woman with a geriatric uterus. <laughs> She's a woman. And geriatric? Yes. After 30, like after 35, you're... Re reproductive no, I, thought system. I thought she was calling you geriatric. No, she, a, like, be a geriatric uterus. So, like, once you hit your 30s, you're, like, creeping into geriatric, mm -hmm. you know, reproductive organs as a woman. And after, I think, 32 or 4, I can't remember. They keep changing it. They keep changing it. So, mom, I think, is considered geriatric. Like, 37. Yes. So, yes. So, after 35, uh, you're considered a geriatric pregnancy. So, like, I was in my 30s when I was talking to her, but I was, well, still in my 30s, but, like, I was like 32 when she told me this. Yeah, 31, 32. And she goes, welcome to having, welcome to being a woman with a uterus that's essentially geriatric. Fuck you. I told them off and stopped going to see my, yeah. I don't blame you. I'd have told them off too. But as you should. As you should. And then I don't, I don't know what the healthcare system is like there. I can't really comment on that or if it's really easy to find another primary care doctor or general practitioner but i would encourage you to keep looking as disheartening as it can be because i was i got there at some point i understand that my doctor's a fucking gem and most doctors aren't like that but like definitely i would encourage you not to give up on your health because it's really easy to do when you're that like, discouraged because you're the, you're the one that knows best yeah what's you know on. you best don't let them tell you that you are not it is a problem yeah it's just don't but don't let them tell you that everything's okay. Like I as, as much as you possibly can, I would continue to encourage you to seek out and advocate for yourself. Like I said, I don't know how it works there. I'm not going to even pretend to know. Um but if you can, definitely don't give up on yourself. Okay? Please. Cuz you're worth sticking around for. Okay? Another is not easily found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could I could I, I figured I figured. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I really am. I hate that for you. That sucks. I hate that. We just figure the healthcare shit out, please, people. Like, why is this so hard? Why is this so hard to figure out? Like, basically, just do your job and be nice. Right. Like, I, I don't understand why it's so fucking difficult for people to be cared for. And, like, also, it's, like, I understand, like, doctors, like, if they have, this, uh, like, the sense of tough love, and maybe yeah. that's what he thought he was doing, like, with the whole jokey thing. Yeah. But, but it's, like, oh, if I tell her fat, she'll listen to me. No. I'm doing it out of love. The last person I will ever listen to who calls me fat is someone who is a fucking man, first of all. Like, you can fuck all the way off. And someone who couldn't give a fuck less about me and didn't even read my fucking chart. <sighs> so. Yeah, I remember going with her once I was when I was horrified. I'm so sorry, Micah. Aww. Sorry, guys. That kills me for you. Because I know the fucking feeling, and that's awful. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that's the reality of it. I just, I wish there was a way, like, there are enough brilliant minds in the world. Why have we not figured out a way for every person on this planet to be cared for properly? Like, I just don't understand it. Right. It doesn't make any kind of fucking sense to me. Autism people, we need to revolt and fix this. <laughs> Where's enough of us now? We need to re revolt. Revolt. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay, well, I'm getting a water boy mom headache again, mm -hmm. so... I think I think I have that's all I have to say Amanda do you have anything else on the matter no um this kind of like will lead into another topic because I kind of brought up this up to Nikki a few weeks ago and we we're trying to think of Sorry. episodes but if you on counter too but way. the uh the um oh, I've yawned like five times yeah but the whole it kind of ties we won't get into it at all here but like it kind of ties into the whole like women getting misdiagnosed with like depression, anxiety, which yes, they may have, but it's also like, or bipolar instead of being diagnosed with ADHD or autism. Yeah. It's like, cause they don't want to recognize it as much as women. Um, cause it presents, might present differently in women. Um, but the whole, like you just had depression, anxiety, but yes, that came from somewhere. Yeah. Like, like there's a reason for it. It doesn't just manifest out of fucking nowhere. Like there's either a hormonal imbalance or something's going on. Like they don't just come around for no reason. 
Uh, Micah says, I luckily I got a new doctor when I moved to move in with Ray, and that has been a lot better. Like even me saw as a hypochondria. Oh. You mean she, the old doctor, saw me as a hypochondriac, and that's so oh fuck that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I hate it. Doctors are shit. <laughs> Some of them. Boo. Don't like it. Not your doctor. No, not my doctor. I love my doctor. If she's watching, you're not shit. Yeah, if you're watching, you're not shit. I love you. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but I I just I wish there was a way to fix that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about it. It's it sucks. It feels very helpless and very powerless to be in that situation, too. Because like, what are you supposed to do? But I I think so, uh, so after we talked about how fat you are, do you want to eat some cake? Yeah, probably should. Um, but Let's wait a little bit for cake. Sure. And you want to show them the... I do. I want to get into the Patreon real quick before we get into Jeremy because... Um, let me just bring it up over mirror and put it over mirror so I can see both things as we share our screen. Let me go back to this. And then we are going to do a little screen share real quick. We're going to show y'all the Patron. The Patreon. Uh, let me see if I can view this. Real quick, in a way that y'all will see it when you get to it. We're going to present y'all. Share screen. Patreon. Okay. We are going to show y'all the Patron real quick. So this is what you'll see when you go to our Patreon. This is our welcome page. Hello. Hi. How are you? Here's everybody here. Um, This beautiful thing that I just posted last night. It's our first post. Um, is a beautiful ebook designed and compiled and then, you know, by me and then edited gracefully by, by Micah. Thank you very much. Appreciate you so much. Um, we have the Chronicles of Jeremy premium ebook here. That's what I just posted up last night. So a cool thing about this book while we're on this topic is we have the shop button here. Kabam. I wasn't going to have this as an option at first, but then I figured out that maybe we should do that because I could actually post this for people who maybe don't or can't commit to the three, five or $10 a month, but would really like to have my, um, my have the Chronicles of Jeremy. Sorry, my brain's breaking down. Chronicles of Jeremy ebook, right? They really would like the ebook but they do not want to subscribe at the $5 or $10 a month tier. You can just buy it outright for $5. So I thought that was pretty cool. So if you just want to buy the ebook, but don't want to be a monthly patron, you can buy the ebook for $5. So that's available on our shop page. This is the home page where all the posts are. You guys already saw that. Let's go to collections real quick. Here we have everything extra. These will all be included in the $5 a month tier, which is the loyal tier which we will show you here in a moment. Um, this is our Chronicles of Jeremy collection. We'll house all things Chronicles of Jeremy. So this is all the episodes of Compiled Audio plus the ebook here for our loyal and fellowship membership tiers. So everything is here, audio compiled. Then we have each of our Mad Libs compiled here. So this is every audio of the Pokemon Mad Lib and every audio of our 90s Mad Lib available here for you as we complete mad lib books they will go up in full in a collection so we will not be releasing them by episode we're going to be releasing them by collection um as they are finished and then also we have our pre-youtube era spot here where amanda has been diligently working on putting all of our backlog of episodes that were not video and audio format to some gameplay that she recorded with um, either her on her own or playing with her cousin or her friends, or a couple of them are with me. Um, and she's adding that video to the audio so you can watch a little something while you listen. So all the pre-YouTube era things are there. Let's pop over to our membership options real quick. This is what people will see, again, minus the Ray and Micah tier, because I have not yet put that up yet. So we will do the Ray and Micah tier. Everything's being very slow. Sorry, guys. Okay, so here's our membership tiers. These are the paid options. The Inclined, let's talk about it. This inspired by one of Jeremy's first big adventures, saving the Frillies in a village from Civil War, we present you the Inclined tier. So what's included at our $3 a month tier is member shoutouts, 
first look at new merch. Oh, we're going to worry about it. <laughs> first look at new merch. First to know about future bonus content that might be coming to the Patreon. Pre-video episodes set to gameplay. You get to vote when we have polls on um, either content options or new merch designs, things like that. And then access to our Discord at the inclined level. So we are, um, our, we will show you our Discord here in a little bit too. So we have all of that ready to go for you. Um, that is what is included at that tier. Moving on to the loyal tier, which is where most content is, almost all content is. Um, for just two more dollars a month, you're at $5. This is our loyal tier. This is also inspired by the Frillies episode. Um, this is the loyal faction. And these people just jumped right in. We're right behind Jeremy, had no hesitation. So this tier is for you. If you want all the content, all the goods, all the shit, plus everything in that first tier, you come on over here. We got Chronicles Jeremy ebook here. We got compiled audio here. We got phone wallpapers that we still have, <laughs> that we still have to put up. Um, we also have um, the compiled Mad Libs and all that stuff, like I already said. And cool thing. The people who sign up at the $5 a month tier, you guys get to listen to the show on Patreon on Mondays. So instead of waiting for Thursday to come around for us to have an episode, you guys get to have it here on Mondays. So you get to listen early because we'll drop the episode here on Mondays for you guys. And then plus everything in that first tier, you guys get as well. And then this is our beloved fellowship tier. Um, everything included in the first two tiers plus we added a monthly live chat with Amanda and I. We can talk about whatever. We can have a topic for the month. Maybe we can throw a poll up and vote on the topic for the chat. Also, you, yay, <laughs> Monday episodes. So we uh, have a fellowship tier, which I was talking about, um, live chat. That gets you access to live chat with us plus everything in the first two tiers. Also, you guys will have your own section of the Discord at the fellowship tier level. There will be a special chat group for that. There will be a um, voice channel for that as well for when we do our monthly live chats. Um, and then you guys just kind of get to be the first to know about everything all the time, no matter how top secret, because this is our inner sanctum. Mm -hmm. It's our inner circle. And I like the description that I put with it. It says, this tier is for those willing to stand by our side every step of the way as we journey through the neuroverse together. Being part of the fellowship is the highest honor granted to our followers, therefore granting them the highest reward. The fellowship includes everything in the previous two tiers, an exclusive Discord server just for fellowship members and a monthly live chat with us. And then as we go and get bigger and better content, you guys get it first. Um, we will always be catering to our $10 a month tier because that's the highest one we offer. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Nick put a lot of work into this. Yeah, I did. I tried real hard on this. Um, I can take zero credit for our Discord. That's all Micah. But um, I can take credit for Patreon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I crafted our Patreon. Um, I, I really do love it. It's a little labor of love for me. So I am going to probably baby it. And take care of it very well. So we are going to treat you well in our Patreon. This is not just a fuck off thing. Like y'all will be taken care of over here. So come on over to our Patreon. If you want to get this banging content. It's good shit. Um, there will be more to come. As the years go by. But this is how we're going to launch it off. Quickly. I would like to show y'all our Tee Public store. The merch store. We're just going to bring this up real quick. We are going to share this tab instead. So this is tpublic.com. And this is our store on tpublic.com. And these are our merch options. We did not want to start off with just some generic ass. Here's our logo on a t-shirt. So me and Amanda spent some time um, kind of thinking about what would be a cool shirt I would want to wear and what would represent us as autistic and ADHD people. So we designed all of these. This is not AI. This is not ripped off. I spent time on Canva. Amanda, you know, helped and put in her input. And we put these things together and slapped them on products for you. So this is the I am autistic sign, sign, design, inspired by, or 
Barbie. Barbie. The I am Knuff. I am Knuff. It was uh, ripped off by I am Knuff, but it says I am autistic. So that option is available for you. Then we have waiting for my meds to kick in, which I do want to uh, show you this one and the options that are available for it because um, this one's a little different. It's one of the only shirts that we actually have in just the t-shirt option only. This big thing will be printed on the back. So this is actually the back of the t-shirt. You can choose any color you want, but it's only available on the back of something on this t-shirt brand or this t-shirt. And then the front of our shirt is a small little logo here, which looks like this, the Neurodivergent Convergence Podcast. And it's got a little melty face on it. So it's got a little pocket emblem on the front of the t-shirt. And you can, of course, get it in any color because it actually does show up well on pretty much anything, maybe other than black because you won't quite or, see or yellow, the, or yellow with the face because you won't quite see that on black but um well actually yellow does fine mm -hmm. but black might be a little hard just because of the color of the lettering but it's pretty cool so that's one of our only ones that has an option for um something on the back of the shirt then one of my personal favorites we have behold the field in which I grow my fucks. Gaze upon it and see that it is barren. <laughs> Blow that up a little bit for you so you can see it. This is got to be one of my favorite shirts. Um, it does come in male or female sh uh, fits. You can choose different kinds of the t-shirt. A tri-blend, a v-neck, a premium. We have it in yeah. tanks. Yeah. Yay! Thanks, Micah. We have it in tanks. We have it in, see down here, we have a hoodie, tanks, crew necks, long sleeves. We have accessories, so you can do stickers, you can do phone cases, totes, pins, magnets. We have mugs, wall art, and pillows, okay? That is available as an option for all designs. Every design has all of these options. Any and every design you can choose will have these options. And right now at our store, they are running a sale for our launch, which is cool. Our I Am Autistic shirt, our Waiting for My Meds shirt, the Behold My Fucks shirt, and this guy right here, Rhythm with the Tism, mm -hmm. are on sale for two days. They're running at $16 a t-shirt. Other, other things are different price, but they're on sale. I believe it's, uh, does it say how much percent off? Just... Just as it's just on, on sale for two days. Okay, so they're on sale. Go over to Tee Public. So I need that one as a hoodie. Yes, yes, get you a hoodie. So these are on sale right now. Go grab them at a little bit better price. So this is our Rhythm with the Tism shirt because I, I really wanted one that said that. <laughs> so this is two, in two options available for you. So this would be for your lighter color options. Like if you like a white tee, if you're a white tee girl uh, or guy or they or them, um, you can have this as the dark writing. And this is the style a little bit bigger. Again, available on all manner of things, right? It's available on all manner of accessories and whatnots and goodies. And then we also have the same t-shirt for you with light colored writing so that you can get that on darker colors if you're a, a spooky girl, mm -hmm. they, them, or he. Mm -hmm. I uh, happen to be that. She's a spooky one. I'm, which I am, one. I am spooky. I like my clothing dark like my silk. Okay. Also, this is probably one of my favorites besides the Behold My Fucks uh, field. It's called, it's the Don't Talk to Me When I'm Overstimulated Because I'll Hurt Your Feelings shirt. Um, I am working on getting this in a, as in, in the flipped option where this is all black writing so that you can get it on lighter colored shirts. I just haven't posted it yet. But this is that option too. Again, this is available on all manner of things, not just t-shirts. Um but this one is not currently on sale for some reason. I'm not sure why they did, chose not to include every one of them. But this is my fave. Absolutely love it. I also thought about making this an option to go on the back of a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't get that far. With, with, this as the logo. with that as the logo on the front. So I might, I might add that as an option too. So this is, this is it. This is our T Public store. We will be adding more merch designs as we make them. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be adding that. And you guys, the people in the Patreon know first. So when we're going to launch a new merch design, we will let our Patreon know first. Because that gives you guys time to know. Because every time we drop a new merch design, it will go on sale. Every time. 
it will be it'd be at a special price. So we want to let you guys know ahead of time so you can prepare, save up for whatever you need. We're glad you like him, Ray. Do it. So we glad. Oh, you like we're glad him. you liked them. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're glad you liked him. Um. So yeah. So this is this is what it is. This is what we got. Uh, grab your merch. Get in the Patreon, but not you, Ray and Micah. I'll fix that in a minute. Just give me time. I'll get it up there. Y'all do not, do not you dare pay any of those prices that are seen. Do not you dare. <laughs> we are working on your tier. I promise. Okay? Do not you dare she do it. She was in the hospital. Yes. I was in the hospital. I'm sorry. The plan was to do it last night, but I was too damn tired. So we're, we're getting it. But don't you dare pay any of those prices. I will get you in there. I promise. Okay. So that's that. We're going to stop sharing now. That is what we wanted to get to before we got to Jeremy. I wanted to let everybody know it's here. Go get your stuff on sale while you can. Today is currently the 5th. So two days from now. That's all you got. Today and tomorrow. Or just today and tomorrow. Yeah. No, because it said 22 hours. Two days and 22, 22 hours. hours. You have so, 22. No, two days and 22 hours. Oh, I'm sorry. So I didn't, see, I didn't hear that. That was a lot of twos at once yeah. and my brain didn't register it. So you have Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So you have two days and 22 hours from right now. Uh, the 5th, May 5th at 2.15 p.m. Central Standard Time to go get your merch designs on sale. Okay? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hit the Jeremy. Thank you all uh, for sticking around this long. Please keep sticking around because this is a fucking good story. This is the one time I'm going to tell you don't leave. Just stay. Okay? Just stay. I know, even, I know there's not that very, very many people on the live right now. However... If you're catching the replay, don't leave. Please don't leave. It's so good. Here we go. We're going to hit the Jeremy. All right, we're back. We're on the other side. Ooh, sorry. I didn't know your hand was coming across. I'm so sorry. It is karate yeah. chopped her hand reaching for the mouse. I was like, Kip. Okay. Okay, we're going to read now. Y'all ready to go? Can everybody hear Amanda? Okay, I'm going to put the mic a little closer to her so yeah. she can be real nice and she's just like loud. Here's the mouse. <laughs> okay, so. They had, I'm going to just read off the last, um, the last paragraph we did. So, um, we go. The rest of the team downed their pints and left for the ship. On the way back, Freya spoke with Ray and Micah at length about what else she saw while in Vaughn's presence. He was truly no good and this job was bound to go sideways. Once the ship was loaded with the gold, Vaughn handed them an envelope with photos of their soon-to-be detainees and left their ship to return to the palace. When they opened the envelope, they were shocked to see a familiar face. Back at the arena, Finnegan had just entered the maze when Sympathy and Binky came running back to the tree line. Vaughn lied to all of us. He purposefully told us the wrong time so we couldn't prepare Velvet properly. She doesn't even know. She and her mother are still in the garden. If she doesn't get in the arena by the time the next horn blows in five minutes, she forfeits the entire thing and you're a dead man, Sympathy said frantic. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Sympathy said frantically and out of breath. Finnegan, did you hear that? Jeremy called out through the portal. I'm on it. Oops, sorry. I'm on it. Get me to a portal. Get me a portal to the garden. Finnegan assured. What about the maze? Jeremy asked. It's done. Enough questions. Let's go. Finnegan yelled back. In the garden, Velvet and Queen Violet heard the horns. That snake. Velvet screamed. He did this on purpose. How dare he defy our law. No rite of valor has ever started before sunset. Queen Violet exclaimed. Just then, Finnegan popped up right in front of Violet, grabbed her by the arm, and said, Sorry, no time to explain. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no time to explain. We have to go now. And through the portal they went. Jeremy had opened another portal underneath the arena where Velvet had would have been getting ready for the trials. On the way, Finnegan told Velvet that he had done what he had done and the rest of the plan and sent her up through the arena on the lift with seconds to spare as the final horn blew. Just as he was about to leave, a bag was thrown over his head as he was dragged out of the arena. Velvet's arrival only infuriated Vaughn more as he watched his sister walk to the center of the arena. The announcer's voice echoed, echoed her approach. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time once again for 
the right of valor. Tonight, Duchess Velvet of the House of Grey will endure three trials. A test of will, a test of intellect, and a test of strength. She will be given a choice of three tools or weapons to use on her journey. Should any of these items break or get lost along the way, they will not be replaced. There can be no outside help or interference of any kind and absolutely no crowd commentary during the trials. Each trial will last one hour. She must complete the trial within that time frame. Failure to do so will result in the abrupt end of the right and all prior sentencing will stand. Should she become injured and unable to continue, the right will be terminated and all prior sentencing will stand. Duchess Velvet, do you under understand and agree to these terms? She looked up to her brother in the royal box when she proclaimed, I do. The entire arena exploded with applause and Vaughn seized with rage. The announcer continued, Duchess Velvet, which, to which tools have you decided to bring with you into your trials? I choose a rope, a sword, and a box of matches, Velvet answered. The Duchess has chosen her tools. Let the trials begin, the announcer said excitedly, eliciting cheers from the crowd. Velvet approached the entrance to the first trial, and the announcer declared, This first trial is the Forest of Will. Your objective is to make it to the other side of the forest within your allotted time. Your time starts when the horn blows. Good luck to you, Duchess. The horn blared loudly, and Velvet ran into, these den into the dense woods. It's so dark in here. Finnegan let me know that he had marked the trees I should follow with an X, but I'm definitely going to need some light in here, Velvet said to herself. She began searching along the tree line for a small branch she could use as a torch handle. This'll do, she said, grabbing a two-foot-long stick that had fallen from one of the trees. Now I just need some fuel. Luckily, this forest was full of a waxy moss that covered nearly every tree. Velvet collected some of the moss and stuck it on one end of the stick. She used her sword to cut a strip of fabric from her cloak, then wrapped that fabric around the mossy end, tying it off in a tight knot. Velvet squeezed the end to encourage the waxy substance from the moss to cover the fabric, then lit it with one of the matches from her tool pouch. I'd love to see my brother's face right now. He has no idea how much I've learned in my time with the Glamour Guild, she said smugly. Just then, the announcer's voice came over the loudspeaker, though muffled due to the dense canopy of the forest. Fifteen minutes have elapsed. Forty-five minutes remain in trial one. His voice resonated through the woods, scaring some birds from their perches high in the treetops. Oh, I can't believe it's been that long already. I've got to get moving. Time is wasting, Lovett thought to herself. Holding her torch, she made her way to the first tree Finnegan had marked, then the next, and the one after that. A faint light became visible in the distance. Oh my god, there's the exit, she exclaimed. The sound of the announcer once again echoed through the trees. Fifty-five minutes have elapsed. Only... Nope, 50. Uh, oh, 55. I don't know why I said 55. I'm sorry, my brain not working. 50 minutes have elapsed. Only 10 minutes remain in trial one. As the announcer's voice faded, she heard another voice behind her. She had been hearing strange whispers and noises the whole time, but this one was different. It was almost familiar and had been calling her name. She turned around to see a silhouette of a man in the distance coming toward her. Frightened, she turned and tried to run toward the light of the exit, but the figure suddenly appeared in front of her. Hello, daughter. The deep voice resonated through her like the bass of a drum. It was her father. Velvet was in shock. How could this be? Her father died over a decade ago, yet there's there he was right before her. Father? Is that really you? Velvet said in a shaky voice. Oh, how I've missed you, child. Her father whispered. How are you here right now? I watched you take your last breath ten years ago. Velvet asked suspiciously. I'm here because you need me. You need me, don't you? I could see that you are lost, so I'm here to guide you safely through the darkness. That light you see in front of you is not the way out. Your friends have deceived you. While you were here risking your life, they've abandoned you and escaped with a band of pirates known as the Liberators. The path your friend has carved for you will only lead you in circles, child, to keep you distracted. Come with me now and I shall guide you home. Her father, her father held out his arms as if... If, Oh my gosh, as of expecting Velvet to embrace him. The ever-present sound of the announcer's voice emitted through the trees. Fifty-nine minutes have elapsed. One minute remains in the first trial. Just as suddenly as he appeared, the man was gone. Velvet quickly realized she had been tricked. It was yet, yet another ploy by her brother to secure her failure. There was no time to waste. She ran as fast as she could towards the exit. The announcer began counting down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. 
The voice sounded even louder now as the light grew larger and larger. Velvet picked up speed, dropping her torch as she ran faster than she ever had before. Everything seemed to be moving in slow motion, the light staying just out of reach. Six. Five. Four. She focused on the light, the light feeling so far away. Three. Two. Velvet took one last step. Using a fallen tree as leverage, she pushed off, launching herself toward the exit. She tumbled head over heels and landed in a heap on the ground. The next sound she heard moved her, through, moved her to tears. It was the roaring cheers of thousands of spectators in the arena. She had made it through the first trial with one second to spare. She did it! The Duchess has passed her first trial! The announcement bellowed over the loudspeaker. Velvet rose up from the ground, dusted herself off, and looked to the royal box once more. This time, Vaughn was not alone. Next to him stood the court's mage, a young cat named Illusion. So that's how he did it, she murmured to herself. Seems the trials themselves are not all I will be challenged by today. The next phase of the trial would be simple. Finnegan had Nadine carved a straightforward path for her, a hole that was suspiciously goat-shaped in a perfectly straight line, looked to have been eaten through the inner portion of the maze, completely undetectable to the spectators because of the sheer height of the maze walls. As Velvet made her way with ease through the second trial, the rest of the fellowship was quite literally tied up, some tied up elsewhere. The Liberators had indeed detained her targets. Ray sent Asha to report to Vaughn that the job was done, while others stood guard outside the tree line behind the south wall of the arena. Ray, Michael, Bjorn, and Steve. Micah. My, you said Ray, Michael. Michael. Sorry. <laughs> Ray, Micah, Bjorn, and Steve stood in a half circle behind each member of the fellowship. Freya had cast a spell that put everyone to sleep. Everyone except Finnegan, of course. He seemed to be immune to her spell, and had been fussing about the entire time. So as noise making would not blow their cover, Ray decided it was time to reveal themselves. Hey there, Finn. It's been a while. They chuckled to a rather bewildered Finnegan. Ray? Micah? Freya? Is that really you? Finnegan looked around. He could hardly believe his eyes. Standing before him were all his friends he had met before joining the Fellowship. Finnegan's time as a thief had been spent with the Liberators. They were his family. Finnegan was so excited that he forgot his legs were still tied together. When attempting to stand, he lost his balance and fell into Bjorn. Thanks for the save, Bjorn, he said with a laugh. I'm happy to see everyone. Can somebody please untie me now? Ray cut Finnegan free, and they all embraced. At that time, Asha came running in. Guys, we have a problem. Vaughn wants Jeremy for the third trial. I overheard him telling the court mage to place Jeremy on a small plank of wood at the top of a 100-foot-tall climbing wall at the end of the course. When Velvet makes it to the top to rescue him, the platform will snap, sending them both falling to their deaths. He's sending his guards to get Jeremy now. What a snake. This was never part of our agreement. What do we do? Meanwhile, back in the arena, Velvet made it out of the second trial with ease and was met with the thunderous din of the crowd. She had finished so quickly that she had time to rest in the preparation chambers under the arena. Up in the royal box, Vaughn was fuming. He grabbed Illusion by the cloak, got right in his face, and said... She has somehow managed to thwart our efforts to sabotage her twice now. How can this be? You are supposed to be the best mage in this kingdom. This time I'll take matters into my own hands, but I order you to assist me in the final step. If she passes this third trial, consider yourself not only fired, but banished along with her worthless lover. Now get down there and get ready to finish the job. Vaughn shoved Illusion towards the stairs as he let go of his cloak, causing him to stumble backwards down the stairs before crashing to the ground outside the arena. Humiliated, he walked toward the arena's south wall, where he had a better view of the platform Jeremy would be standing on. By this time, the sun was starting to set. He heard a noise coming from the tree line, perking his ears up. When he turned, he saw the glow of a lamp and decided to investigate. On the other side of the plaza, Freya stated to the group, Someone's coming. I sense their magic is similar to my own. It's the court mage. We have to do something, Micah pointed. Let him come, Freya replied calmly. He has hesitation in his heart. I believe he may be persuaded out of his assignment. Let me speak with him. Illusion made his way through the trees. He was suddenly met with the most beautiful cat he had ever seen in his entire life. Her eyes were like the sea, a beautiful glassy deep blue. They captivated him, rendering him speechless, almost as if he was under a spell. Hello, stranger, the cat said in a soft, enchanting voice. I wonder if you could help me. I came here searching for Brandyvine. I was told they grow here, but I can't seem to find any. Can you help me? Uh, of course, miss. But I'm afraid you're looking in the wrong woods. They only grow in a grove south of the village. I can take you there if you'd like, he replied eagerly. Oh, thank you. I just knew you could help me. I'll meet you at the village gate. I just need to gather my things, the cat replied as she turned and faded back into the forest. Right. The village gate. 
I'll head there now, Illusion replied and ran off to await his beautiful new love. The cat watched as Illusion ran off. As she turned to walk away, she transferred back into her regular form as a fox. It was Freya. She had used her shape-shifting abilities to trick the court mage. It's done, she assured the group. Get everyone out of here without being seen. I'll meet you by the river outside the northern gate when this is over. What about Velvet? Jeremy would never leave here without her, Finnegan implored. Leave it to me, Freya declared. The avo announcer's voice again blasted through the arena. The final trial will now commence! The spectators watched as Velvet pushed, pulled, climbed, swam, and swung through each obstacle with ease. Before her lay the last one, a towering platform with Jeremy standing at the top. Velvet began her ascent, the, crown the, the crowd at the edge of her seats, edge of their seats. Higher and higher, she rose until she finally reached the top. They could hardly believe their eyes. Their duchess, perched upon a high tower, frantically scrambling to untie her love. Suddenly, the earth began to shake. Everyone gasped and clamored in confusion. The duchess and her love flailed wildly, wildly trying to keep their balance. Suddenly, there was a loud crack. The arena fell silent. The, well, the wall had become damaged in the tremor and was cracking and breaking down under Jeremy and Velvet's weight. Helpless, the crowd watched as their beloved duchess and her lover fell ten stories what would most certainly be their deaths. As the dust settled and the arena, silent arena watched in horror, waiting to know how the unlucky pair's fate, Vaughn sat in the royal box, leaning forward with his hands folded neatly in his lap with the biggest, slimiest smile smeared across his face. To be continued. Yay! Yay. That was Jeremy. What do you guys think about the Jeremy? Move this back to the middle of it. What do you guys think about the Jeremy? We put a lot into that. I could have said so much more. Mm -hmm. I really wanted we to. Literally, we were really typing up to the last. Minute. Yeah, we were typing up to like the last 10 minutes. I really wanted to like actually flesh out each trial and really like put a lot into more into it, a lot more detail. But it was literally becoming like a chapter book in itself. <laughs> like it really <laughs> like was. a novel. Yeah, it was becoming a novel. So like we i wanted to leave some suspense and some room for like growth like we usually do is like to be continued like what's gonna happen now thanks guys it's quite literally a cliffhanger that's what amanda said <laughs> so yeah quite literally a cliffhanger um i'm glad you guys like it ray and micah how do you feel about your characters do, do you like your creative mm -hmm. uh writing or, which we or, totally took you know because we were like right from you like, yeah because nikki you even asked she goes how to, she's like, I want to put Ray and Micah in the story. Yeah. She's like, I just don't know how to do that. I need to know their favorite animal. I'm like, just kind of like act like it's related to the pot. Like, oh yeah, just like, what's your favorite animal? <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of like being sneaky. I'm sure you figured it out. I'm not very clever. Uh, trying to figure out what your favorite animals were, but I, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Um, feel free to add your own creative control as you wish. Like you're welcome to like give your own input. If you want your character to do something, let us know. We'll write it in. Um, but I think that adding you to your idea of like the band of pirates and like but you're not like everyone thinks that you're these awful pirates most people are like scared of you guys but like it's really not that big of a deal it's more of like a i wouldn't call it anarchist because that's also extreme but like a code of honor kind of society where like they only allow certain members in because they almost have like to be samurai, vetted almost like a samurai code. yeah almost like a samurai code yeah like it has to be really you have to be of integrity and you have to meet the code and keep the honor code and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to, we're going to flesh that out. We're going to keep them around. Thank you. I'm glad you love the story. Um, we're going to keep them around. We're going to keep fleshing that character arc out and keep it going. But guess what? It's cake time. It's cake time. It's time to sing happy birthday to us and, and has cake. Ready? Mm -hmm. We're going to have some cake now. Look, we have Darth Vader plates. Darth Vader plates. We love them. Mm -hmm. Go Yay, with to go with our party theme back here. So we're going to have our little cake and we're going to sing happy birthday to us. Because it's our birthday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never, Thank you, ma'am. Never, never had a cotton candy cake before. Yep, so. we're going to find out what cotton candy cake tastes like. Cake, Ray. Yes, cake. It's so cute. On the it's inside. so cute. Oh, my God. Look at the insides. Blue. Can you guys see that? There's like a blue line of frosting through the inside. It's kind of glary, but yeah. see it. Oh, here. You can see it better that way. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's like a blue line of frosting in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready, Minder? Yeah. Happy birthday to us. <laughs> Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, the NBC podcast. Happy birthday to us. Let us eat cake. Let them eat cake. Woo! Oh my god, it's good. 
It tastes just like cotton candy. That's crazy. Cotton candy and vanilla. Yeah. Oh my god. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a whole ass problem. I won't be losing weight today, I'll tell you that much. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get the hell out of here. Thank you, Ray and Micah and Micah's mom for sticking around the whole time and anybody else who tuned in but maybe wasn't commenting. Anyone who's catching the replay, thank you for watching. We really appreciate you all. Yeah, we love the replay crew. You guys are great. Um, come hang out. Um, I was going to show the Discord, but I forgot. It's fine. We'll show it maybe on our next episode. Come hang out um, on our Discord, which you can access at any tier of our Patreon. So at any tier, either 3 5 or $10, you get access to the Patreon. Um, there are special perks, like I said, at the $10 tier. But come hang out over there. Um, your, our Discord's there. Come get in there that way. Check out the merch. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's all we got. We love you all. Thanks time. for joining. Thanks for joining. Happy birthday to us. And we will see you on next. Thursday. Yeah. 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 And if you're in the Patreon. Well, it went not quite Oh, Monday. not this week. Yeah. So next, starting next Monday, not this upcoming Monday, but the Monday after, we will drop the episodes early. So we have one week in between. But now I'm also going to get the phone wallpapers up there. All that good jazz. We're going to keep working. All right. We love you all. We're going to go bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye. bye.